Hi, today we are going to see uh, one more topic from Informatica that is about session properties. What is a session? Actually, session is a set of instructions that tells the integration service how and when to move the data from source to target. Actually, we need a map for each session. Okay, the integration service actually uses that map and session to move the data. A session can be created in the workflow. Okay, today we are going to discuss about the session properties. Here, there is one property called fail parent if this task fails. What is the purpose of this property? See, actually, the parent of the session is workflow it is always better idea to check this option otherwise what will happen I will show you now if here we have not checked this property and I am running one job over here okay I started the workflow I am monitoring it actually the session has got failed but here it shows the workflow got succeeded this should not happen so for that we have to set this property to f yes that means we have to click this property then see what happens now both shows failed this is the correct status that is the main purpose of this property second property we will see now write backward compatible log where it is available already this is checked normally this is not checked actually I have uh, actually I have previously I have set this uh, checkbox so normally this will be not checked and if we set, set this property we will see what what is going to happen okay I have set this property actually normally the log files will be generated in binary format that means dot bin here the log files is getting generated in dot bin format if we want to create the log file in the particular directory here the log files are getting created in this directory if we want to create in text format we have to check that property okay right backward compatible log Th this text file will be created okay I will delete the data and I will show you what is happening now okay now we are running this job see what's happening it shows succeeded it will check the time 739 here 739 it has got created okay 739 it has got created so by using this property we can generate that log file in text format bulk versus normal we have to see this now we are going to what is the property here at the target level normally this target load type should be normal only if we change it to bulk what, what will happen see the if you change this target load type to bulk for initial load normally for initial loading the data we will be loading in bulk okay for initial load normally we will uh, change the target load type to bulk but if you want to use the bulk mode the table should not contain any constraint and index if index or constraints is available on that particular table means then we will throw error okay so we have to keep this property always normal except for initial load and make sure that index and constraints not available here at bulk is available okay 
and one more information if you use bulk the log files that means uh, that changes won't be written to the log so you cannot recover the data okay in normal mode we can recover the data the data will be staged for the recovery here it won't be written to the that uh, log files okay changes won't be written to the data base log file don't uh, confuse with the session log and the database logs and here save session log by what is this here it is available save like session log by session runs or session timestamp see what now what has happened we will see here the timestamp okay here uh, we can see the timestamp before that the timestamp is not there and date along with the timestamp is getting generated if you use this property that means here you have to set this save session log by session timestamp otherwise session runs mean the timestamp won't be available lot of properties are there some important properties we are seeing now and stop on errors we will see what is save session log actually the save session log by and save session log should be used uh, both the properties should be used uh, one after the other and um, here if you mention save session log 5 that means if you mention 2 or 3 then uh, the up to 3 uh, times the log file will be generated that means for testing purpose if we want to compare the session run of the previous one with the current one then we have to set this property i am setting this number 2 over here let me will see what's happening to check here see it start with 0 and up to the number 2 it will be generated i i will i am running this uh, workflow twice now one time again one more time i am uh, two times the number will be generated so 0 1 2 1 2 3 times it start with 0 and end with 2 again if you run it start with 0 this property should be set when we want to compare the two session runs the result of the two session runs okay and pre and post sql actually during the bulk load data won't be loaded if the target table is having any index already i told about these things so during bulk load we can use the pre sql over here Where is that? Here. Yeah, here you can specify delete. Uh, if you want to, ah, uh, sorry, if you want to drop the index, you can specify drop index index name, and you can create in PostgreSQL create index index name. Okay, then what will happen is while loading and using that pre SQL. Three is equal means before loading the data, it will remove the index, it will drop the index from the target table, and after loading the data, committing the data, it will create the index on the target table. So for that, you have to use the post SQL. That is the main usage of this pre SQL and the post SQL. Email, 
I have not configured the email server over here otherwise we can on success you can reusable or non reusable we can give on success or failure we can send the email to the concerned person here you can configure it email username email subject text etc okay this one and commit interval what is this commit interval here that commit interval is there see for every here we are having only uh, small file the employee table contains only 15 records if it is around uh, uh, 1 million or uh, 100,000 then uh, we have to specify this commit interval for every 10,000 rows uh, the data will be committed in the target table okay for every 10k rows loaded the data will be committed then stop on errors this is the most important property you should know actually stop on errors means by default it will be zero only already I have changed it before that I have checked it and that is why I changed it normally it would be zero only Just before that, we will check the source data first. In source, there is no actually duplicate records. Let me will add one duplicate record. See what is going to happen over here. No, okay, we will run like this actually. First we will run that zero we have kept that we will see what is happening now and now it has got succeeded that means uh, Uh, we, have, we have got the data over here and around 15 records are there ok and now I am going to add a new record in the employee table see here I have added one record which is uh, unique one that means uh, I have added a new record over here and I was saving it and let me will see what's happening now okay now it's contained 16 records here we have got the record already loaded that means that uh, the target table it contains around 15 records that shows I, uh, I have added one more new record and I have kept stop on errors as zero here okay let will see what is happening now monitor the things and shows it succeeded actually but only one row got loaded rest of the 15 got rejected here that table has got the unique constraint okay but as we have not given the stop on errors one it is not stopping the program it allows the program to execute 
and it allows the good records to be processed and loaded into the target and it rejects all the bad records that means duplicates are rejected now see what happens i am changing the property now now i am changing the property stop on error to 1 let we will see what's happening now card here got saved now it will throw error okay it says unique constraint the system got the unique constraint so as we have mentioned the one in the property it throws the error so we have to remember this this is the most important one and last one is truncate table option what is that we will see now here uh, there is one option available truncate table target table option what what is actually does means see if you want to keep the current record and if you want to delete the old one in some companies there might be some business requirement that today's data is only will kept in the table the yesterday's data will be removed at that time if you click this truncate target table every time when the data is getting loaded the old data will be removed from the table okay if there is no old data available means it will be removed here it so succeeded only okay the old data is getting removed so that it is not throwing that unique constraint violation okay. uh, this is these are all the properties so far we have seen and uh, rest of the properties will be covered in the next section next session thanks bye